Please give a round of applause for John Burns. Thanks, Ringo. Um, I just wanted to have a quick chat today um, about a professional pivot I had in my practice. Uh, a couple of years ago, I used to work for a pretty large ed tech, or tech company, I should say. And they used to talk about your influence in this company in three ways. Uh, they talk about level one. And so as an employee, you would start at level one and they'd want you to be really, really good at level one and just really dominate that role uh, within the company. And if you did that, then they'd talk about moving to level two. And level two was where you could maybe influence what happened in the marketing and uh, communications teams. You might influence IT operations. And there was also level three, and level three was, don't even go there. You're not going to influence where the home button is positioned on a particular device. You're not going to influence what markets we push into. Be really good at level one, and then perhaps you'll start influencing other parts of the organisation through level two. And so things were going well, and I had my first uh, shot at really working at level two when this new device came out. And I saw that this device had the potential to really transform uh, educational practice. And so I targeted this big event at uh, the government and particularly the education department and pulled in a whole bunch of heads from all the different uh, parts of the organisation. And so I hired this really cool venue down in Brisbane. Uh, we set up this lounge area with bean bags and all these devices. We had device art, we had a bar, we had a DJ. Like we, we put on a, the full you know, spread and then we had a whole bunch of devices to borrow as well. And, and the intent was speed dating. So we'd have a whole bunch of speed dating built around literacy, numeracy, uh, challenge-based learning and other things. And then do a keynote and really pitch the device uh, as being a really appropriate one for education. Um, and it was going really well. We set up uh, time-lapse cameras to catch it all. Um, and then this happened. <laughs> that's, that's me cackling in the background. And that's the sound of level two just crashing to a halt, really, professionally. Um, so a fruit bat flew into the transformer outside the building, blew all the power, and we lost power to the entire event. So I'm just like, all right. And so I'm just like, you know, it's a... It's a big, big sandwich, you just got to take a bite. So I'm just like, we can keep going, don't worry about it. And so we ran the entire event in the dark and did the whole thing uh, just with the light of the devices. I did a keynote with no presentation, people couldn't see me, and it was beautiful. Like, it was, it was amazing. You know, at the end of the event, people were saying, like, did you do that on purpose? And, I, and it was sublime, it really worked well. And it, and it was really nice, at the end of the night, we'd finish packing up. And um, one of the management, one of the bosses came up to me and said, hey, mate, I want to talk to you tomorrow. Let's go have a meeting at 10 o'clock, have a coffee. And I'm like, sure thing, let's go have a coffee. You can tell me how awesome I am and how this is all great. And so I get to the meeting in the morning, and I'm like, cool, uh, what do you got to say? And he's like, this isn't the John Burns show. And I was like, that's a really weird compliment. That's a, yeah. <laughs> that's, I wonder how you're going to spin this. And then he was just at me. He was like, you didn't connect him with the sales team. No idea about technical support. When did you challenge them? When did you give them opportunities to work together? What are you doing post this event? And it was just like, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, holy moly. Like, I had a completely different take on this. And he ended with, you know, a flash in the pan's easy. Real change is hard. And that was it. And it was like, and I remember leaving that meeting <laughs> and being like, thanks, mate. Really great talk and good feedback. You... <laughs> and I was, oh. I, and I spent the next week in this, this cage of emotion. I was just beside myself because I really had a different understanding of how things had gone. Um, and what annoyed me the most in the end was that he was absolutely right. You know, I wasted a huge opportunity in terms of leading real change. And as I read um, and reflected, so I reflected on leaders like him who, you know, in hindsight now, he's, a, he's an amazing guy and, and, and we get on quite well. Um, and read, you know, read the work of Fullen and, and McKin McKinsey and, and the likes of um, Cotter, um, I got a better understanding of how to actually shift and lead change in organisations. And it really came together for me a couple of, um, about a year later actually, uh, we ran another event and I worked behind the scenes to get it all up and running and it went really well and a mate of mine came up the end and he said, mate, that was awesome, but how does it feel to be a man in black? And I was like, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, you know, you've done all this work and this event's gone really well, but no one knows you had anything to do with it. And that really hit me and I went, like, actually, it feels really good. Like, that's, I guess, the way I want to lead change. And so, you know, as I think about 
This movement we have, if we really believe in contemporary practice, if we really believe in the maker movement, if we believe in the edtech movement, then maybe our roles is to sort of step back, to step to the side. You know, build capacity in those people in our organisations who can enact change and, and shine the light squarely on them. You know, maybe it's time for us to be more the women and the men in black. Just a thought. Thank you. <laughs>